I heard you want to say that Bill Cosby was under surveillance by the FBI during the 70s. Yeah, everybody was. J. Edgar Hoover was what he was, but something was wrong with him. And the FBI had everybody under surveillance. They had Martin Luther King under surveillance, Andrew Young, Stokely Carmichael, H. Rapp Brown, um, Huey Newton, Eldridge Cleaver. They had uh, Mayor Tom Bradley of Los Angeles under it. They just snooped on everybody. And I find it astonishing that the Black Caucus acts like the FBI has been our friend. The FBI was created to get a black man, uh, Jack Johnson, the first black world heavyweight champion. He had a white wife, and she and her girlfriends used to hang around him, and they thought that was horrible, so the FBI was created to investigate that. They came up with the Man Act, which most recently they got R. Kelly under, and it was just awful what they did. J. Edgar Hoover considered black militancy as a poison, a disgrace, and a hotbed for communist subversion and something that would overthrow the American way of life. And interestingly enough, if you look at pictures of him as a young man, you can see why. And if you look at what the Smithsonian Channel and the History Channel have been putting out over the last few years, it was a black man. Now, there is a couple that matches the name of his parents, but they had a child that died back in 1921, just one child. That's not J. Edgar Hoover. If you look at the other one, you will see two black people who are very, very fair-skinned, and they got run out of Louisiana for trying to pass for white by the Klan. Now, paradoxically, Hoover used to hate the Klan with an extreme passion because of that. But he didn't like his own people. And the Klan was a good thing for the FBI to be after. But black people became his fetish in terms of going after. So everybody that was active back in the 60s well remembers getting hauled into an FBI headquarters and interrogated about something you said or that you were presumed to have done. And a word of advice, if Federal agents talk to you. Never say you don't know anything about it. Just say, I refuse to make a statement. I have nothing to say to you. Because ordinarily they'll tell you what you have been brought in for. And you say, I don't know anything about it. Well, they just told you something about it. And when they indict you on 17 counts, 29 counts, if you've got a good lawyer, he can get you acquitted on all counts. But the last one, which is making a knowingly false statement to a federal agency or agent, and they get the client on that, he's convicted. And by the way, I'm looking at some of the stuff that's going on right now, and some of the people that have been involved in some things are liable to be prosecuted for making knowingly false representations to federal agencies, perhaps grand juries and stuff like that. And I'm going to laugh when what is inevitable becomes reality. Um, can you let people know? I think because of the whole situation that happened with Bill Cosby, people forget the amount of work that he did and the support he gave other black people. Can you share with uh, the people Bill Cosby helped financially that you're aware of? Over the oh, year? Bill Cosby helped a lot of people. But see, most importantly to this mix first time he ran into problems was when he got the financing together to acquire NBC. You did not want a person like Cosby to control NBC as a corporate entity. Then he got it again. Then they started bringing all this stuff out of the woodwork. And he got an assurance from the elected district attorney 
the office of district attorney, that there would be no prosecution. Fifth Amendment says that you have a right to remain silent. You cannot be compelled to give evidence against yourself. But in a civil case, you can. So when the DA issued that written edict that there was no intention to prosecute, that they found the case was frivolous anyway, the civil judge ordered him to comply with the deposition request in a civil action that had been brought against him. Well, he admitted the acts, but not the intent. He said, she wanted this. This is what I gave her. This was like sex, drugs, and rock and roll all through the 60s and 70s. It was a thing. So the new district attorney said, screw that. We're not going to be bound by the agreement. Well, she had to be because it was the office. So that was Fifth Amendment. I said that from the front end. They've got no business going here because all they're trying to do is ruin this man. And when they locked him up, he tells me, and I talked to him, he said they offered me over and over the opportunity to get out of jail within a week if I just say, okay, they're right. He said, hell no, I'm not going to do that. It's a matter of principle. So inevitably, he got acquitted because of the Fifth Amendment violation. This group now does not care about compliance with the law, which is the scariest thing going. Not what they're claiming other people have done, but this violation. Now, what's happened in the name of being politically correct is to a legalist rather astonishing. For example, in most states, if somebody took a baseball bat to you and hit you in the face with the baseball bat, knocked out half your teeth, broke your jaw in three places, you'd have one at most two years to bring a civil action. Meanwhile, if you're a woman and somebody squeezes your ass, you got 30 years. It doesn't make any sense because in the name of being politically correct, you're doing something that is against the law. Now, you shouldn't abuse women, but the bottom line is, is the law deals with humans. And it says at some point, you need to get on with your life, either do something on the pot or get off. And also, just with time and space, won't the story get distorted as your distance from the experience? Yeah, that's tell a tale long enough and loud enough, anybody will believe it. And see, there were all kinds of things that went wrong with the Cosby case. In fact, some of those women that were on that, what was it, McCall's or something magazine that all claimed to have been molested by Cosby, See, I recognize some of them, and that was from parties at the Hollywood mansions where it was sex, drugs, and rock and roll where the person would show up, take a coat off, see through, no bra. Fifteen minutes later, a bottom off, and she's running around in thongs, and a half hour, she's completely naked, and she's hitting the coke, and the fine wine and you know, you go to the bathroom and you gotta wait and then she comes out wiping her lips holding somebody's hand or you go to get your coat and she's screwing somebody on top of your coat and you go back to another party and there they are three or four days later doing the same thing. So it's kind of like you choose to jumpstart your career, you don't have that great of a talent thing anyway and it doesn't work now you get old and over the hill it isn't your fault and then you get people like Gloria Aldred meanwhile I can recall a conversation with her at an Emmy party she'd been drinking wine and she was bragging about how she extorted these celebrities by threatening to come up with complaints against them unless they paid to settle something so, I mean, it's a vicious thing. And to show you where it's going, back here, there's a move afoot to add a special type of felony rape, rape by seduction. Now, what the hell does that mean? That means if a guy and a gal go out and it's springtime and they go to a nice restaurant, have a good dinner over candlelight, nice wine, and they go for a walk in the park and they're holding hands and your place of mind, and they get over to wherever they go, kissing and hugging, clothes come off, and nature takes its course. Well, that's supposed to be rape by seduction. 
what they claim is supposed to happen is, honey, you know I'm horny. How about if we go to dinner and then we get it on afterwards? Is that all right? Well, hell, that'll get you nowhere because that's so some every, lame so ass if, style. So if everything's not laid out prior to the event, someone supposed, can argue that you were raped by seduction. Yeah, that's supposed to be raped by seduction, so felony. This, so is this going to pass? No, but they're pushing it. But that just shows you where they're coming from. Like, excuse me. But when did that change? Human interaction. I, well, that's the point. In other words, look, look, how do you think humans run this mating game? Look at all these people around here. Most of these people were fortunate enough for that seduction and, you know, thing to have worked out. That's how you get people. That's the human courtship ritual thing. So you want to change all of that because nobody's interested in you? Uh-uh. See, it doesn't work that way. Uh, and then you hate men because what you think they've done to you? Well, okay. I think anybody that hates women is crazy. Anybody that hates men is crazy. But see, there is this thing that I saw 55 years ago that's come to the forefront. Is men and women are different. They're equal in value, but they're not equal in what they do. And some people have a problem with that. Now, let's take one example I can think of right now. One of the most powerful women in history, Cleopatra. Cleopatra, all right? What did she do to get insinuated with Julius Caesar, probably the most powerful man in the ancient Roman world? Allegedly, she had herself wrapped up naked in a carpet and taken over by a slave and unrolled in front of Caesar at his feet. So, seduction. yeah, seduction. She should do STEM. See, it works both ways. Um, a lot of women hate it, but, you know, you're driving down the street, somebody cuts you off. God, that, and, oh, shit, damn, baby, cut me off again. You know, hell, damn. Man, you see that? Damn. You know, so nature is nature. And people talk about objectification of beauty. Yeah. If we didn't objectify beauty, we'd still all be looking like chimpanzees. <laughs> well, we don't. Judge, I, I just want to jump back real quick. Can you list, if you remember, the, the amount of, I just want people to know the amount of people that Bill Cosby helped when they were in dire situations. Oh, yeah. Well, I, what I was getting to uh, is I talk about generic categories. Bill Cosby helped a lot of people. See, it was a role model. He became an exemplar of what you could be if you sat down at the kitchen table and paid attention to your homework. He was playing part of a family when one of them was a physician and one of them was a lawyer. Now, that's supposed to be a fantasy in some people's mind. Hey, that don't happen. Yeah, it does. And I know couples, lawyer, doctor, or two doctors, two lawyers. And they came out to projects, old time projects, you know, came out of South Central, came out of all kinds of hoods around the country. They made it. And that's because instead of yielding to the temptation of doing nothing, they sat at that kitchen table and they busted their ass from kindergarten through 12th grade. You do that and the rest of your life is wide open to you. You can do whatever you want. And the problem is, is too much of this is predicated on that's not what we think we ought to do. And Bill Cosby was trying to say, this is what you ought to do. This is what you can be. This is the way it's supposed to work. You see how I'm talking to my children right here? I'm being reasonable with them, but I'm putting down the rules, and my wife is backing me up by she's saying, let the beatings begin. You know, if you get out of this on his joke albums, that's a reality. You see, he's trying to help all those people. He loaned money to people. He gave people advantage. He got wrapped up in something that a lot of the current last three generations don't get, which is in the 60s and 70s, there was this thing called sex, drugs, and rock and roll, the sexual revolution, 
where having sex with somebody was about as casual as having a slow dance at a house party with somebody you already knew. And that was the flavor. It happened all the time. So now it looks like it's odd. It looks like it's something, oh my God. But we've got some screwed up dynamics. Right now, for example, there are more boy virgins 25 and under than there are girl virgins. There are more boys who stay at home with a parent 30 years of age and under 35 and under than there are girls. Only 44% of the American workforce is male. Only 28% of each year's high school graduates for the last 20 some years are male. Only 32% of the college undergrads are male. Only 36% of the grad students are male. Something's happening. There's a great book called Boy Crisis. I forgot the name, something Farrell. But he, he really breaks down how basically men have just given up. No, they haven't given up. Go ahead. They've oh, been wait, taught. They've been taught to. Because you see, you had people like poetress Nikki Giovanni going around in the late 60s saying the worst thing you could do is have a father in a child's uh, life. The best thing was to get pregnant. Don't tell the SOB he was the daddy. You can do better on your own. She had really problems. saying that? She was re we cussed her out at a BSU meeting at UCLA 1968 for saying that in front of 10,000 people. Hold on. The lady that, that did the interview with Yeah, you, that one. She said that? She said that. Two occasions. 1967-1968 at UCLA. I was witness to her in a room a little bigger than this. UCLA BSU, we met with her afterwards, and several of us took offense at what she was saying. Did she ever explain the purpose, the reason? Yeah, she thing? hated men. But she seems like a, I don't know her, right? But she seems like a. Yeah, it's, see, it's, uh, you got to know who you're following. But you see, this kind of thing was poisonous, and it was not good for anybody. But, see, when you start getting this kind of propaganda put out by people that become trusted and you get made to trust them or induced to trust them by false representation, it is what it is. See, Bill Cosby did so much for black folk and then now we've got this negativism because he was a man, a strong man, so he has to be destroyed because there is an agenda. Nikki Giovanni, who spoke poison for the black family, is glorified. Bill Cosby, who was just doing what we all did, except he was prominent, and maybe he didn't take the precautions the rest of us did, or maybe he became too big a target, which some of us never became. They went after him. Well, hell, recently I got victimized by that nonsense. There's a certain woman that played Moesha's mother on the TV show. She said some TV judge, famous, stuck his tongue down her throat, sexually assaulted her, and it wasn't Judge Mathis. Well, some idiots assumed it was me. It wasn't. It was Mayor Koch of New York who became judge of People's Court at the time this is supposed to have happened, worked with the same studio, and that was at the same NAPTI event in 1996 when yours truly was dealing with James Earl Ray. 